name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Do please take a seat. Well, a very warm welcome, everyone. Glorious day of God's creation. It's a little cloudy now, but uh, there's prospects for more sunshine later on. Uh, and thank you to see you all. Um, a particular welcome, of course, to those who are joining us either this morning or later on um, by the live streaming method. It's uh, great that the congregation of Crosby Ravensworth uh, is um, expanding and uh, has this morning and during the week. Now, speaking of the expansion of congregations, it's a particular joy to welcome from all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> Hugh and Kelly. <laughs> Great to see you here today. <laughs> uh, I think they're an old, well, particular welcome in a moment. Um, friends, when it comes to the administration of Holy Communion, I take it that we are back to the normal offer. That is to say, uh, the bread and the wine, but if you prefer not to receive the wine, then please, please simply. Um, next week, just uh, as I remember, is the uh, one, of, one of the United Benefit Services, uh, and that will be held at Cliburn, and that will be 11 o'clock. Um, so just that one service for the whole Benefit uh, next week at Cliburn. Are there any other notices before I do something really important and very special? Uh, two, Richard, actually. One, I think oh. we might have the phone turned on. Just asking. I have. Thank you. And the second is thanks to everybody. We have 13 teams of 13, 14 people yesterday on the hands and knees scrubbing in the gutters, clearing up the church on that side. So, great, great that they've done that. Oh, thank you. Yes. Bring yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> So I said something very special, the fourth, forthcoming, and it's the publication of Bands of Marriage. Um, so I think I'm welcoming a special welcome to Lee and Jane. There they are. <laughs> Great to see you. So I published the Bands of Marriage between uh, Jason John Smetter Minson and Chloe Ann Richardson, um, who wish to be married in this church. Uh, by virtue of their connection with the parish, we got to this. Uh, and uh, published the Bands of Marriage between the Bradbury of this parish um, and Jane, Elizabeth, and Mitchell, also of this parish. If any of you know any reason in law, in law, <laughs> why the person may not uh, be respectively, respectively denied, you are to declare now. Oh, Mel is obliged to be shaking your head, so I think, I think that's on behalf of everybody present. <laughs> Wonderful. That was for the first time last week. Uh, speaking of first things, it's the first Sunday of Lent, um, this wonderful season of preparation for Easter, uh, and I invite you to turn to the Blue Hymn Books and find the words of All Hail the Power of Jesus Name. Number 14.
situation as we bring ourselves into the presence of God, we say to God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and willingly magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do please sit or kneel for our prayers of repentance. And in a moment of quiet, we're going to recall uh, the terrible events in Ukraine. Totally unjust war, untold suffering for millions of people, uh, all the refugees fleeing conflict and bloodshed. Uh, and we offer a lament to God for human violence and aggression. And we also acknowledge our part and our failures in making peace, seeking healing and reconciliation. So a few moments for both a lament for the peoples of Ukraine and of recognition of our part in human sin. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> As we prepare to give our attention to the scriptures and what God may be saying to us through them this day, uh, here's our church's prayer for the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So the reading, uh, which you'll find on the pew sheet, for them. Um, some of these, like David, is going to emerge for the first week of time. <coughs> the first reading is from the Old Testament, from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, beginning at the first verse. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. 
When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, George Hunt Smithen's reflection on the wilderness experience. I see. Uh, Topics that it was adapted by Michael Forster. It'd be interesting to know what ways it was adapted. Anyway, uh, 40 days and 40 nights is 202. standing as we receive uh, the gospel, uh, which, which Janet brings us today. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where, for forty days, he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Do please uh, take a seat and take a moment to uh, reflect on anything that struck you uh, that you want to uh, uh, reflect upon for the future. My MOT test being due, or I should say my car's MOT test uh, being due, because Julie carried out this uh, last Thursday, and I'd like to say the car passed the test. Uh, it might have cost 54.85, uh, but apart from the legal requirement, that is worth it to know that the car, of course, was fit for purpose. Now, tests are very much part of our lives and experience, whether it's the annual uh, MOT test uh, on the car, uh, proving it's safe to drive, uh, or whether it's the driving test, uh, which uh, uh, enables us to drive in the first place. Or, or for that matter, the eye test, uh, which um, checks out whether we can see to drive, or read, or anything else for that matter. Uh, or the medical test. Uh, to find out about uh, any potential malfunction. The, the, the range of tests in our own times uh, available to us, it seems to be quite extraordinary in order to aid diagnosis and doing so. Thank God for the scientists who developed such an array of diagnostic tools. Oh, all, for that matter, moving on from medical matters, the, the past tests uh, to make it sure and to ensure electrical appliances are safe to use. Not to mention the uh, whole testing regime associated with education these days. What is in focus as we prepare for Easter, not least on this first Sunday of Lent, uh, is the testing, the testing of faithfulness to the ways and the purposes of God. If we think of ourselves and our churches, are we fit for purpose? Are there malfunctions? Uh, I mean, at local level, not necessarily Darsen, but there may well be malfunctions at Darsen, but that's uh, for local knowledge. Is it safe for us to be 
known as followers of Christ. At that testing of faithfulness to God, to God's ways and God's purposes, is very much embedded in the biblical narrative. Before we look at the testing of Jesus himself, it's perhaps crucial to our understanding of the Gospel reading to recall the testing of Israel, uh, the people of God, in the wilderness. Uh, and there's you know, immediately that connection of 40, isn't that? 40 days, 40 years. And that's because there is a far-reaching similarity between the nature of their testing and that of Jesus, with the implication that he is covering the same ground, so to speak, but passing the test which Israel failed and continued to fail. So, according to Deuteronomy, and not the passage that was read to us, that Israel was allowed to hunger in order to learn that one does not live by bread alone. Israel was instructed to worship the one and only God and not to follow other so-called gods. Israel was commanded not to put the Lord God to the test. As I say, Israel, God's people, people of faith, failed at all those tests Unlike the people of God in the past, Jesus proves his faithfulness in the wilderness. He proved himself to be the true Son of God, which he had just been declared to be at his baptism. Looking a little more closely, uh, the tester, the tester suggests that Jesus used his power as the Son of God to satisfy his physical hunger. That is for his own ends. For his own ends. Jesus affirms that his primary hunger, as I guess it should be for the whole of humanity, that is for the word of God, the maker. Uh, I guess it makes an interesting question to ask what he intended in the prayer which he gave his followers. That give us this day our daily bread. More very familiar words, aren't they? Um, are we to think of the next meal that we hope for, or are we to think uh, of being nourished by all that God says, uh, and in particular by the word of God himself? Well, you might want to say it can be both, and it probably can. But I rather, I rather favour the second interpretation. Asking on a daily basis to be nourished by uh, the word of God that we've heard in the scriptures. Well, then the tester suggests that Jesus exercises his status uh, to rule and control the world in exchange for worshipping the powers of destruction, destructiveness, and coercion. Uh, that's my take, following a little bit following the Kenny Eagle. Uh, that's my take on devils, the, the power, the power of destructiveness, coercion. I can't resist the suggestion that Peter may have made such a pact with the devil that Jesus would not. God's kingdom is nothing if it is not embraced willingly and joyfully. To Jesus, the God of peace and justice, and gentleness, and love, and freedom to choose, will alone at his worship. Well, then the tester tries using the scripture, using the word of God, if you like, to get Jesus off track. Uh, it has to be said that the tester has often succeeded in getting people of faith off track by using the scripture. Proof texts and whatever. Now that calls to mind the uh, Reformation debate as to whether people should have individual access to the scriptures to interpret them as they choose, or whether the scripture needs um, a lively, as I say, a living expositor. Well, I, I actually, I feel a good angle now, I have to say both. <laughs> uh, though I think that in the end, 
we must always defer to the mind of the church and to recognise biblical scholars. Uh, I used to say when I was doing some doctrine teaching for the um, ordination, local ordination course, uh, it's that you buy one book, or a set of books, they haven't said you buy commentaries on the scriptures. Find out what the most learned people are saying is me before you give us your opinion. But the main point, uh, the main point, of course, is that God is to be trusted, not tested. God has revealed his ways. God's revealed his nature, his creation, uh, and in the life and work of Jesus Christ, uh, which are ways of helping and healing and gentleness in love. In other words, God has shown himself abundantly to be absolutely trustworthy, uh, not least for us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We do not need, we must not venture to test him, but to trust. Well, by facing these tests and proving his fidelity, Jesus demonstrated for us, uh, didn't need to demonstrate it for God, he demonstrated for us his obedience to God's ways and God's purposes and his confidence to engage uh, in ministry as God's one and only true Son. Can't help saying that may raise in, in our minds of how people are tested before they exercise public ministry in the church. Clearly, the church doesn't always get it right. Uh, I mean, I've just been having to apply for my auntie for DBS chair. Not because I'm personally <laughs> errant in that, you understand, but because, well, but everybody has to be, we have to have those tests in place. Um, clearly, yeah. Uh, and also the clergy discipline measure, for instance. But perhaps, forget about the clergy, uh, perhaps the most important question is how all of us recognise the testing of faithfulness to God's ways and purposes when it comes our way, as it most surely does. Jesus invites us in the Gospel to demonstrate that we are God's children, that we are God's children, by the quality of our common life, love one another as I have loved you, by our readiness to forgive, how many times shall I forgive? Seven times? No, 70 times seven. By our capacity for mercy, be merciful as your Heavenly Father is merciful, and by our commitment to be peace makers. We surely need to pass those tests before we can hope to be heard by the world. If you're able, I invite you to stand, and if you feel able to join in the church's profession of faith, I invite you to do so as we turn to the word of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was entirely from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we exercise our faith as we offer our prayers to the Lord and Neil is going to lead our prayers. I invite you all to kneel or sit as he is before. <clears throat> I'd just like to say first that in, if you're in Israel, an awful lot of Israel is desert, and you can, if you're on the mountain in the Sinai, you can see, even if, you, if it's not miraculous, you can see so many kingdoms. You can see Jordan, you can see Saudi Arabia, uh, you can see Egypt, and uh, you know, the temptations, these big, big, big kingdoms, Israel was little, these were big, big kingdoms that Jesus was shown. And that was just looking at from the top of the mountain. So Father, let's pray. Gracious God, you call us to worship today and remind us that Jesus refused the temptation to worship the evil one. Rather, rather than receive the glorious kingdoms of this world, he endured first the time in the wilderness and ultimately the pain and suffering of the cross. Help us during our Lenten journey to fix our eyes on him and daily pick up our own crosses. So we pray for all our Lent activities here in the Eden Valley, for all of the special services, midweek groups, and for those preparing, presenting and assisting. May they all lead us together to a holy Easter and the joyful celebration of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, help those who govern and rule nations today to resist the temptation to use evil, violent and corrupt ways to bring about their personal desires rather than ruling with justice, mercy and benevolence. And I'll read the prayer that the, the Archbishops of the Church of England have put together for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today we pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow. We pray your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. And we pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, friend of those in need, your Son Jesus can free us from our burdens and heal our bodies and spirits. So we pray for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. And we pray too for those suffering from addictions of any kind and ask that you will help them put the temptation of Satan and the world behind them. We continue to pray for our hard-pressed medical staff and give thanks for those, for those and for those who have worked hard to develop the Covid vaccines and we pray for generosity in making them available to the world's poor. Mm. And locally we remember Dorothy Brass who is still in hospital and anyone else that we know that is sick ill and in, in need of comfort in mind or body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So faithful God, you have taught us to overcome our sins by prayer, fasting and works of mercy. So when during the coming weeks of Lent we are discouraged by our own weakness, give us confidence in your love to help us through to the glows of Easter. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I invite you uh, to be able to stand and be prepared to share a sign of peace, or whatever nature.
Not stand. Get on with it. And in the words of Jesus, in the, in the teaching of Jesus through his followers, we do find a, a major test of our faithfulness to God's ways and God's purposes. Uh, the words of these, of course, Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 for we have no help but thee. Um, wonderful hymn for our journey through Lent. Uh, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. The words are 422. <coughs> Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he prayed.
praise to you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, the mother of your son, St Lawrence and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory be yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <coughs>
face once again the magnitude and the majesty of God's love. So we share together in the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. Can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Rick Wesley hymn, words of which you'll find at 36.
grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.